All right, <clears throat> so I've had a chance to uh, use this little guy a little bit. Um, shot a wedding with it. Um, you'll be seeing some clips from that. Uh, my overall impressions are quite good. Um, for a $1,000 uh, 4K 100 megabits camera, it's phenomenal. Other questions that we got in the comments uh, were about the um, rolling shutter and um, I did some tests for that. All these tests were filmed with the on-camera mic, which is that guy right there. So someone had asked about the sound quality from the on-camera mic. Um, the 5.1 is kind of a joke. It's, it's all being recorded from a single point, so it's kind of not really able to do actual 5.1. I think it's just a marketing thing. Um, and then the, the quality only gets better when you add on, you know, other pieces of equipment. All right, so here's a rolling shutter test. This is at maximum wide zoom um, at 4K 30p. Slow pan. Fast pan. Ridiculous pan. All right, here's that same rolling shutters test. Image stabilizer off at mid zoom. So it was halfway through the range, 4K 30p. Slow pan. Another mid pan. Another fast pan. This is at maximum zoom. Um, quite a bit back, further back. Stabilizers off, 4K 30p. Slow pan. Mid speed pan. Fast pan. Um, someone wanted to see blue sky and birds and some gray sky and birds and so did that Well, I don't have dark skies and I don't have buzzards. But I have an airplane And Orlando skies. This is image stabilizer off 4k 30p All right, so this is a 4k zoom test 4k 30p um, image stabilizers on standard Alright, we're about mid-range. And now we're fully tight. On a tripod. This is full zoom at 4K 30p. Standard image stabilizer. Full zoom, 4K 30p on a tripod. I should also say this is all at 100 megabits. This is end of the sun. 4K, 30p, 100 megabits. All right, again, this is overexposed manually. Um, trying to get a read into those trees directly into the sun. We tested the high speed inside and out. full zoom with 4K um, crop. You'll be seeing that in those, a lot of the wedding shots that you'll be seeing. Um, the crop, cropping in to HD from the 4K. Um, that was definitely 
a slight disappointment. I'd say it's between 75 and 80 percent of the quality of my uh, Canons at HD. Um, I was expecting, you know, maybe at least the same quality, but I think those expectations might have been a little bit high. Um, and with a little bit of noise reduction, it works great. Um, definitely usable for my for my uses. Um, we also tested the steady, the uh, optical image stabilization, and let me tell you, that is ob absolutely phenomenal. Um, pretty much the entire camera unit inside is mounted um, in order to uh, keep the shot as steady as possible. Another thing that's definitely good to be aware of is the manual, how they how it works. So you push your manual button, it pulls up whatever manual selection you had before, and then you can change the, the focus um, and other, there's a ton of other settings. So when it goes into manual, you see the face detection turned off um, because you're in manual focus. And then I have the mag focus magnifier on, which works really, really well. And then the peaking you can see there. So um, definitely happy with that. Um, how you would change the manual settings is that that manual button, your manual controls are that and this ring right here. Um, so you'd push, I found this out by accident, you push and hold and it pulls up what setting you want the manual to be on. So like say you want exposure, you roll your ring to that right there you push in the button, the manual button, and now you're in exposure uh, settings. So you can see, amping up the exposure, pulling it back down, um, and then you just push it again to go back to auto. And the, there's still an icon there because we left the focus um, in uh, manual, and so it, it tells us an icon right there that basically says if you want to go back to auto, you have to then push and hold that manual button again. Go back to focus, and then push the manual button again, and it goes to auto. So that's a little clunky. Again, it's a consumer camcorder. Like the AX50 or AX100 has all those, you know, buttons available to you um, that you uh, are able to change things right away, which is nice in a professional environment if you got to keep using the camera. But for my uses, it's it's perfectly fine. See, another thing um, that I found out. Um, when you're in time-lapse mode, um, it doesn't actually do a time-lapse. It does, um, it just, it's just a timer, an intervalometer for your, for the photo function, um, and it doesn't put them together into a, into a time-lapse video, which was a slight disappointment. Um, so that was pretty much useless. I had to, you know, pull it into Premiere, um, set my duration, you know, do all the stuff that I would normally do if I was just doing a time-lapse with my DSLR. Um, I was hoping that this little guy would have a in-camera video function um, for the, the time-lapse. Um, it also does not have, that I can find, a down convert. So when you have a 4K clip, it, there's no option really to convert it to HD in-camera. That Again, that I've found. I, it could be there, I'm just, I haven't really explored super hardcore for that. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and tell me your thoughts in the comments.